live from San Francisco, celebrating 10 years of high-tech coverage, it's theCUBE, covering VMworld 2019. Brought to you by VMware and its ecosystem partners. Okay, welcome back to theCUBE's live coverage in VMworld 2019. We're in San Francisco, we're in Moscone North Lobby. I'm John Furrier, my co-host Stu Miniman, here covering all the action of VMworld, two sets for theCUBE, our 10th year, Stu. Keeping it going. Two great guests, John Finelli, CUBE alumni, Vice President of Product, Virtual CPUs at NVIDIA, Kevin Gray, Director of Product Marketing, Dell EMC. Thanks for coming back on, thanks, for, good to see you. Awesome, you. great to see you guys too. So, NVIDIA, big news, we saw your CEO up on the, on the keynote, um, videoing in. Yep. Two big announcements, you got some stats on, some Windows stats to talk about. Uh, talk, let's talk the news first, get the news out of the sure. way. Sure, so um, at this show, NVIDIA announced our new product called the NVIDIA Virtual Compute Server. So for the very first time anywhere, we're able to virtualize artificial intelligence, deep learning, machine learning, and data analytics. Of course, we did that in conjunction with our partner uh, VMware, uh, and so this runs on top of vSphere, and also in conjunction with our partner Dell, so all of this uh, virtual compute server runs on uh, uh, Dell VxRail as well. And what's the impact going to be for that? What does that mean for the customers? So for, for customers, it's really going to be the on-ramp for enterprise AI. So a lot of customers, let's say they have a team of maybe eight data, analytic, uh, data scientists who are doing data analytics. Um, if they want to move to a GPU today, they have to buy eight GPUs. However, with our new solution, maybe they start with two GPUs and put four users on a GPU. And then as their models get bigger and their, their uh, data gets bigger, they move to one user per GPU. And then ultimately, because we support multiple GPUs now, as part of this, they move to a VM that has maybe four GPUs in it. So we allow the enterprise to, to, uh, to start to move onto AI and deep learning, in particular machine learning for data analytics very easily. GPUs are in high demand. I mean, you, my son always wants the next NVIDIA, probably told me to get some GPUs from you when yeah. you came on. <laughs> That's the NVIDIA guy to get some for his gaming rig. Um, but that, you know, kidding aside, now in the enterprise, really important around some of the data crunching. This has really been a great use case. Talk about uh, how that's changed, how people think about it, and how it's sure. impacted you know, traditional enterprise. So again, from a, uh, uh, from a data analytics perspective, perspective, um, the data scientists will you know, ingest data, they'll run some machine learning on it, they'll create an inference model that they run to drive predictive business decisions. Um, what we've done is we've GPU accelerated the, the key libraries, the technologies like PyTorch and uh, XGBoost to use a GPU. And so the first announcement is about how they can now use Virtual Compute Server to do that. The second announcement is that workflow is, as I mentioned, they'll start small and then they'll do bigger models and eventually they want to train at scale. So what they want to do is they want to move to the cloud so they can have hundreds or thousands of GPUs. So the second announcement is that NVIDIA and VMware are bringing Virtual Compute Server to VMware Cloud <coughs> running on AWS with our T4 GPUs. So now I can scale virtually starting with fractional GPU to single GPU to multi GPU and push a button with HCX and move it directly into AWS T4 uh, accelerated cloud. And that's the roadmap, so they can get in, get the work done, scale up, that's the benefit of that. And availability timing, when all this so, going to So virtual compute the... server is available uh, on Friday the 29th, and then um, we're looking at uh, mid next year for the full suite of VMware Cloud on top of AWS T4. Right, Kevin, you guys are supplier here at Dell EMC. What's the positioning there with, with you guys? So we're working very closely with um, NVIDIA in general on all their efforts around yeah. both AI as well as VDI too. You know, so we'll work quite a bit, most recently on the VDI front as well. So um, we will look to, um, you know, you know, drive things like qualifying the devices. There's both VDI or um, analytics applications. Um, yeah. Kevin, br bring us up to date, because you know, it's funny, we were talking about this is our 10th year here at the show, yeah. and I remember you know, <laughs> sitting across, the, 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 across Howard Street here in 2010, and you know, Dell and HP and IBM all claiming who had the lowest dollar per desktop right. uh, as to what <laughs> they were doing in VDI. It's a way different discussion here in yeah. 2019. Absolutely, so, so if you'll, oh, go ahead. I was going to say, so one of the things that we've learned with NVIDIA is that that it's really about the user experience, yeah. right? So it's funny, we're at a transition point now from Windows 7 to Windows 10. Um, the last transition was Windows XP to Windows 7. And what we did then is we took Windows 7, we tore everything out of it we possibly could, we made it look like XP and we shoved it out. Right, that, 10 years later, that doesn't work. Everyone's got their iPhones, their iOS devices, their Android devices. Microsoft's done a great job on Windows 10 being immersive, so now we're focused on user experience. So in the VDI environment, as you move to Windows 10, you may not be aware of this, but from Windows 7 to Windows 10, it uses 50% more CPU. 
and you don't even get that great of a user experience, but you pop a GPU in there and you're good. And most of our customers together are working on a five year life cycle. So that means over the next five years, they're going to get 10 updates of Windows 10, and they're going to get like 60 updates of the Office applications. Right, so that means that they want to be future-proofed now by putting the GPUs in to guarantee a great user experience. On the performance side too, obviously. Yes. And auto updates are, and this is the push notification world we live in. Yeah. This and has to be built in from day one. Absolutely, and if you look at what Dell's doing, we've really built this into both our VX rails and our VX blocks. So GPUs are just now part of it, and it's, we do these fully qualified um, stacks specifically for VDI environments as well. So we're working a lot with the N-Vector tools from VM to the make VDI sure the VDI finally made it. Experience. All these years. Yes, yes, it's, and in fact, happening. you know, we have this user experience tool called N-Vector, which actually, without getting super technical for the audience, it allows you to look at the user experience based on frame rate, latency, and image quality. And so um, we put this tool together, but Dell has really been taking the lead on, on testing it and promoting it to the users to really drive the cost effectiveness. So it still is about the dollar per desktop, but it's the dollar per dazzling desktop. All right, yeah. so, so Kevin, <laughs> I hear the frame rate in there, and I've got all the remote workers, and uh, you, you're, you're saying, how do I make sure that that's not the gaming platform they're using? Because I know how important that is. Absolutely. <laughs> but there's, you know, there's a ton of cu customers that are out there that we're using. We look at folks like Ghoul Evans is an example of uh, a company that's worked with us and NVIDIA to truly um, drive types of applications that are essential to VDI. And so these types of power work is doing um, applications like Autodesk that user experience and that ability to support multiple users. If you look at Pat, he talked a little bit about you know, any, um, any cloud, any application, any device. In VDI, that's really what it's about, allow, allowing those, not, those workers to come together. I think the thing, too, you mentioned, Stu, and you pointed out uh, brilliantly, was that VDI is not just an IT thing anymore. I mean, it's a, it really is the expectation now that yeah. my rig, if I'm a gamer or a young person, the, the younger kids, if you're under under 25, you don't have a kick-ass rig. Yeah. I mean, you're like, yeah, yeah. that's what yes. they call it, right? I mean, multiple monitors. That's the expectation. And again, mobility, so wor work experience, workspace, the, the it, it, one. Exactly along those same lines, by the way. This is a whole category, and it's not just like a VDI, this thing over here that used to be talked yes. about as an IT thing. It's about the workflow. Right, so it's how do I get my job done? So we used to use words like business worker and knowledge worker. It's just, I'm a worker. Yeah. Everybody today uses you know, their phone, they, it's mobile, they use their computer at home, they use their computer at work, and they're all running with dual monitors, right? So yeah. dual monitors, sometimes dual 4K monitors, that really benefits as well from having a GPU. Um, you know, I know we're on TV, so hopefully some of you guys are watching you know, VDI and your GPU accelerated, but it's things like Skype, yeah. WebEx, Zoom, all the collaboration tool, Microsoft Teams, they all benefit from our joint solution these with the GPU. These new subsystems like GPUs become so critical, they're not just subsystems, they are the main part, because the offload is now part of the new operating Correct. environment. So we optimize together jointly using the Invector tool, we optimize the server and operating environment so that if you're running a GPU, you can uh, right size your CPU in terms of cores, speed, et cetera, so that you get the best user experience and the most cost effective way. And also, you know, so the gaming world helps bring in the new kind of cool visualization that's going to move into just the workflow of workers, right? So like, yes. you start to see this immersive experience, VR, AR is obviously around the corner. It's only going to get more complex, more needs for GPUs. Yes, in fact, we're seeing more, I think, requirements for AR and VR from business than we are actually for gaming, <laughs> right? Don't you want to go into your auto showroom at your house yeah. and feel the fine Corinthian leather? <laughs> we got to upgrade our cube game, get more GPU focus and get some tracing in there. And yeah. Yeah. Well, Kevin, I, I, I know I've seen things from the Dell family on uh, leveraging VR in the enterprise space. Oh, absolutely. So, I mean, if you look at um, um, a lot of the things that we're doing with some of the telcos around 5G, they're very interested in VR and AR, and those are areas that'll continue to use things like GPUs to help accelerate those types of applications. So um, it really does come down to having that scalable infrastructure that's easy to manage and easy to operate. And that's where I think the partnership with uh, NVIDIA really comes together. Yeah, deep learning and all the stuff around data. I mean, Michael Dell always comes on theCUBE, talks about it. He sees data as the biggest opportunity and challenge. Um, and whatever application is coming in, you got to be able to pound that data. And that's where AI has really shown, or machine learning has kind of shown that that's helping heavy lifting a lot of things that were either manual. Exactly, so the one of the things that's really great about data analytics that are GPU accelerated is we can take a job that used to take days 
and bring it down to hours. So obviously doing something faster is great, but if I take a job that used to take a week and I can do it in one day, that means I have four more days to do other things. It's almost like I'm hiring people for free, right? Because I get four more extra work days. Um, and the other thing that's really interesting is our joint solution is you can leverage that same virtual GPU technology so you can do VDI by day and at night you run compute. So when your users aren't at work, you migrate them off, you spin up your VMs that are doing your data analytics using our Rapids technology, and then you're able to, to get that platform running yeah. 24 by seven. It's really productivity a great- Productivity gains just from an infrastructure, even the user too, I mean up and down, the productivity gains are yeah. significant. Exactly. So I get three monitors now. I'm going to get one of the yeah. Alienware you know, curved monitors. And, you know. and just the difference <laughs> we had, we have a suite here at, uh, at, this, at the show, and just the difference, you can see such a difference and just when you insert the GPUs into the platform, it just makes all the difference. So John, I got to ask you the per a personal question. How many times do people ask you for a, uh, a GPU? <laughs> I mean, you must get that all the time. Uh, we, we do, you know, you know I, have yeah. a, I have an <laughs> NVIDIA backpack, and <laughs> when I walk around, you know, there's a lot of people that only know NVIDIA for gaming. So, <laughs> so it's just, you know, random people will always ask for that. I got two sons and two daughters and I just, they just nerd out on the, on, on the uh, GPU. Oh, I think, I think he's trying to get me to commit on camera <laughs> to give him a GPU. I think I'm in trouble here. No, they got the latest and greatest. <laughs> Any, Any new stuff, I'd be stuff. happy to be first yeah. on the block and get that, <laughs> the, the, the GPU. And it certainly impact on the infrastructure side and components, components the operating environment, Windows 10, sure. any other data you guys have to share that you think is notable around you know, how all this is coming together, working on user experience around Windows and uh, VDI? So uh, I think one piece of data, again going back to your first comment about you know, cost per desktop, so um, you know, we're seeing a lot of migration to Windows 10 and uh, customers are buying our joint solution from Dell which includes our hardware and software and they're buying that five year program, uh, five year life cycle. So we actually put a program in place to really drive down the cost. So it's literally like $3 per month to have a GPU accelerated virtual desktop. So um, uh, it, it's really great value for the customers besides the great productivity. And if you look at doing some of these workloads on premises, some of the costs can come down. We had a recent study around the VX block as an example, and we showed that running GPUs and VDI can be up as much as 45% less on a VX block at scale. So, you know, when you talk about the whole hybrid cloud, multi-cloud strategy, there's pluses and minuses to both, but certainly if we look at some of the ability to start small and scale out, whether you're going HCI or you're going CI, I think there's a VDI solution there that can really drive the, the intense economics. Workloads. Is there any industries that are, early, that are key for you guys in terms of verticals? Uh, absolutely, so we're definitely looking at a lot of the CAD CAM industries, so we just did a certification on our platforms with Dassault, Scatia system, and that's an area that we'll continue to explore as we move forward. Yeah, I think in the workstation side of things, it's all the standard, you know, it's automotive, it's manufacturing. Um, architecture is interesting. You know, architecture is one of those companies that has kind of an SMB profile, because they have lots of offices, but they have enterprise requirements for all the hard work that they do. Um, and then with VDI, we're very strong in financial services, um, as well as healthcare. Um, in fact, if you haven't seen it, you should come by. We have a Bloomberg demo for financial services about the impact uh, of for traders by have a virtualized, uh, virtual GPU desktop. Yeah, so speed is critical for them. Yes. Final question, takeaways from the show this year, 2019, VMworld, Stu, we got 10 years to look back, but guys, takeaways from the show that you're going to take back from, from this week? Uh, I think there's still a lot of interest and enthusiasm. Uh, surprisingly, there's still a lot of customers that haven't finished their migration to Windows 10, and they're coming to us saying, oh my gosh, I only have till January, what can you do to help me? <laughs> Get some GPUs. Thoughts from the show? I just, you know, how the, the multi-cloud world continues to evolve, you know, the continued partnerships that emerge as part of this is just pretty amazing, and, and how that's changing, and things like, you know, virtual GPUs and accelerators and that experience uh, that, that people come from, expect from the cloud is something that I, it, it, for me, is a takeaway. Yep. John Finelli, NVIDIA, thanks for coming on. Congratulations it. on all the success. Thank you. Kevin Ian Delam C, thanks for coming on. Thank you. Appreciate it, thanks for the insights. Thanks, Stu. Uh, here in theCUBE, VMworld 2019, John Furrier with Stu Miniman. Stay with us for more live coverage after this short break. <laughs>